Hey there viewers and welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. Working on a 1994 Ford Ranger XLT two-wheel drive and the fella says that it has some noise underneath it. Well, I found a few culprits for the noise. One of them being the rear shock. The mount is MIA. It has a problem with the drive shaft and also has a problem with the exhaust cowlick converters laying on the cross member. Dampener fell off the drive shaft. So there's a lot of things under here rattling. We're going to take care of these first. I got some new upper mounts, got some new shocks for it, and we'll work our way forward. The other shock is not busted, however, I know it's probably not too far behind this one, so I got two upper shock mounts. I assume, whoa, that's a little funky. We'll just do, uh, we'll just do both of them while we're here. May as well, you know, an old saying, pay me now or pay me later. See if we can get these little guys busted off there. Too bad. So there's all that's left of the old upper mount. So there's the old mount there. You can see, maybe I can't get you around here. Uh, you can see that sucker's held on with rivets from the factory. Uh, this is pretty well, pretty well loaded up with cross straight behind it. So I think what we'll do, because the fuel tank sits there, we'll take and cut it off from the outside of the frame, knock those rivets through, and hopefully there's enough frame left to attach it to. Recessed in there. I love the careful. Oh, fella. So you have to be careful, uh, you know, when you're using your torch, obviously always be careful, but when you're heating the head and it's recessed like it is, it'll start getting some really fast heat transfer to the actual frame. So when you hit the oxygen, you know, psh, you know, your frame will disappear. That's why you see me like cut it a little bit and then, you know, go to the next one, cut the next one a little bit and then come back and revisit it. It gives it time to, you know, kind of cool that way when you come back with your source of heat the majority of it's going to be on the head of the of the rivet, especially when you start getting a frame that's really fragile. Hopefully that makes sense. Find some squints. There we go. Anybody that's used a torch and accidentally cut the base metal under what they intended to cut will know exactly what I'm talking about. Kind of one of those things, if nobody talks to you, you learn. So we'll see if we can't knock them out now. There's one. There's two. Ta-da! Now she comes, and you can see we're left with three, you know, nice holes in the frame, no damage, no accidentally going, cutting a little slit. So really, it's not any different than cutting, uh, well, what you call it, you know, cutting a nut off the threads. It's all about timing and heat control. If you get it too hot, then the bolt gets hot, and then when you cut the nut off, you're gonna cut the threads too, so there we are. We got some of these mounts from Napper. Not a sponsor, of course. They come with a bag of hardware. I think we're gonna give that a little douche of fluid film before we stick it on, for what it's worth. I really don't know why, but we will. Just to be a bunch of nice guys. Eh, look at that. Stick our bolts through from the outside. 
And they come with uh, like a self-locking, you know, flange nut, I guess it would be. It has a little grippies on it. Little grippy doodads there. Stick that one off. that one. And that one. There she is. That was a piece of cake, maybe. Find some air tools. Oh, that's my torch. Oh. <laughs> Good morning. Gonna give these little zippies out from the outside. baby is born. There we go with the full bean. I did come with a new nut and wash up to the top. I just told you we got brand new shockies for it. Slip that little guy right on there. This is a lock nut. It makes you got right side out. It goes on there like so. Got a torque wrench. Snug it. We'll get the bottom half in. Let's see, I guess where we need to be. Oh yes sir. Give that a little too. Find out where our bolt went. There she is. So that's it for that side. I'm gonna do the other side, exact same way. Now that shock's not busted off, but there's just about the same amount of crud and crust on it. Like I said, no, it's not gonna be long. So I'll do that, then we'll move up. We'll take care of the drive shaft real quick. That other shock is done. Now we have to remove the rear drive shaft. We'll spritz her down. We'll spritz her from the back side. Just overall. I'm going to zip this drive shaft out. Now these are 12 millimeter 12 point. Oh, somebody's already had them out. Sweet. These suckers are blue Loctite. But being a 94, you know she's been out before. Oh, almost spoke too soon. If they are Loctite, a lot of times you got to give them up. Just a smidge of heat on the back of that flange. Not bad, not bad, Mr. O. Look at that. Oh, here we go. So this is the dampener that goes up on the yoke. It's done lost its rubber. And frankly, we don't really need it. The fact is, here she goes. Where's she gonna go? Right there. If you buy a new drive shaft for this or have one built, they don't have one on there. Now I don't know if these drive shafts are balanced. It does not appear to have any weight on it. It's a pretty short little guy. The guy hardly uses this pickup truck at all. I think he told me about 1,200 miles a year. Goes to the dump. Gave him the option. We can replace the drive shaft, send this one out, get it balanced, buy a new yoke from Ford, whatever you want to do, or we can take it off and roll it across the floor, take it for a shake. If there's no vibration, ship it. And obviously, he went with plant C. We take it for a drive and this thing just shaking right out of the seat. Well, we can send it out, attempt to have it balanced, but usually when the tubes get this rusty, um, most of the drive shaft shops, we got two of them that I'll send stuff to. If the tube is rusty, they typically won't balance it. Try to put a weight on it, you know, fry through it with their welder. 
all that good stuff. Whoa, man. That gets you right in the teeth if you ain't careful. Good night, baby. So you can see where that ring was rattling around here, you know, beating on the sides of the transmission and you know, it's got the drive shaft all shined up, all shiny. It sounded pretty awful. I'm pretty sure that was the main noise he was hearing. Uh, the other one is going to be here on the uh, Cadillac converter. So the cat comes down and is actually hitting the cross member. When you drive, you hear this thing banging. That's got some rub marks on the bottom of it. So this hanger here is pretty well toast. So what we could do is, you know, fabricate this whole new hanger here. Just looks like half inch, you know, rod or Chuck's pretty old and crusty. I'm gonna teach you an old trick Mima taught me. So what we'll do is we'll clean, you know, we might, you know, nick these off so we got some fresh meat. And typically this hanger went down on this side and then down on this side. You can see where the old remnants is of it. We're gonna take an old two and a quarter inch clamp. Not an old one, a new one. We'll stick that around there. We will attach, we'll just re-weld, you know, we'll clean these up, re-weld them. The weld will be strong. We'll put the bottom back on. Bada bing, bada boom. Dunsky. Easy enough to do. Uh, and this material up through here is strong enough. You know, I'm not, I'm not worried about it. There. Should be good enough. That's quite a bit of material going through the mount into the transmission so you can move this forward or back whatever you see fit and bring that down like I said then we'll just bond those two items all right yeehaw we'll make sure we're up off this cross member. Oh, there's a good inch underneath that. So she's up where we want it. We'll get that down. Here we all tap job. Make sure our clamp looks nice and straight and beautiful. In case somebody looks under here and sees it, you know. Look at that. Wow. That looks beautiful. Good purchase on that. Give her a little tack. All right. I'll grab a helmet. I'm gonna fry that baby home. Get the other one tacked. Might have to pull the clamp off, lift it up, so we get to the back side of it. We should be good. these down here, crush the old rusty pipe. Just snug, snug them up enough where they ain't gonna come off. Don't worry, they'll be rusty here soon. They ain't going nowhere. There. Now that will keep our exhaust from coming down. And then the cross member, that should be all of his rattles. Oh, this you crazy mother... Yeah, 
folks, this baby's all done. Should be as rattle free as a 94 Ranger can be rattle free. At least we're not gonna have that ring banging around on the drive shaft. At least the rear shocks are reattached to the vehicle, or the one. And uh, the exhaust is not gonna be banging on the cross member. Let me know what you think. Go down there in that comment box. Leave your questions, comments, criticisms, concerns. While you're down there, ring that bell right after you subscribe. And just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.